What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Whiskey Delta, brought to you by Military Gaming League. In this show, we find the movers and shakers in the gaming community and highlight their contributions to enrich the lives of those around them. My guest this evening is the epitome of wholesome, as coined as coined <laughs> as of this recording yesterday at at the Dead by Daylight Into the Fog event. Uh, He's an absolutely wonderful human being who I've had the uh, the opportunity to watch, observe, and see what kind of amazing shenanigans he gets into. The one, the only, Stream Dad. Stream Dad, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We appreciate it. My Just, pleasure. Thanks for asking me to do it. No, I, I mean, you know, we're always looking for more veterans with incredible stories to that aren't afraid and are willing to share and show the world um, what folks can do in adapting and overcome. Your story is incredibly unique. Um, but let's go back to the beginning here. Okay. Um, let's, let's go back when you were, when you were a baby pops. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to go. You probably came out of the womb with a beard, didn't you? Um, uh, I didn't know. <laughs> although I have very little now. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goodness. So what made you, uh, those those few years ago, what made you decide to join the military? Um, honestly, um, I didn't have too much choice. Um, it, it was long after the time where if you get in trouble, you had a choice of going to jail or joining the military. It was after that, so it wasn't that. But, I mean, I, uh, I, got, I got arrested but no charges filed against me because I claimed restitution, even though I wasn't the one doing any of the damage. It was the guy I was with, but to keep myself out of court, I paid for all the damages this guy did. Um, and then it was just, my parents were just like, you know, things aren't going well. Maybe you should think about something else to do. And I'm like, like what? I'm already working two full-time jobs. Um, and military got brought up and I was like, you know, I mean, I was at the time, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, but i never felt like LA was my place. Um, so an escape by joining the military really kind of caught my attention, but that's, that's how I got in. I mean, it was kind of spur of the moment, but I, it, it's something I don't regret. It's something I don't regret. I would say some of those things definitely worked out in your favor. The It's interesting when you hear about the household electrician positions, and I would imagine somebody that's worked two jobs in the past uh, and then not necessarily being able to pay attention as an electrician, you, you, you're in line for a shocking experience. Well... I, so how does that work when I tell a dad joke to the one and only stream dad? <laughs> um, <laughs> shocking experience. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, I, my favorite dad joke, right? You've heard me tell it before. Uh, no, actually, I don't know that I have. All right. We, all right. Every we're going to digress. Have, every time I have somebody who asks me, they go, tell me a dad joke. And I go, you know, I would I would tell you a, my favorite joke. It, it, it's a paper joke, but it's terrible. Okay. Um, yeah, it's like it's, the, the the everyone now and again you'll see the terrible puns on the wall and the little strips of paper that are usually like the phone numbers, and then <laughs> the but instead of phone numbers, they're actual puns, and then you so you can literally tear the pun off the paper and it's uh, the, <laughs> the entendre on these things is, is nuts with three years in, I would imagine that's one army assignment. Um, I spent, or is that, um, two? I spent a year in Korea and I tried to extend there so that I could actually ETS from there. I loved Korea so much that I literally wanted to ETS and stay there um, like the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. um, and they sent me to Fort Hood. Fort Hood, Texas, and I spent a year and a half at Fort Hood, which was great. I liked Fort Hood, but 
every six months and I would put in to go back. And even when I tried to re-enlist, they give you the four lines of places you want to be stationed when you re-enlist. And my re-enlistment officer was pretty sure they'd get me anywhere I wanted. And I put the first line, I put Korea, second line, Korea, third line, Korea, fourth line is a joke. I put Alaska. And two weeks later, I got orders that said, we look forward to your arrival here at Fairbanks. And I went to my reenlistment officer and said, you can rip these up now. <laughs> and that's why I got out. I would have stayed in, I would have stayed in, I would have been a lifer, mm -hmm. you know, had that been my choices. But at that point, it just, I knew something was seriously wrong. And I had, like I said, I got blackballed from Korea. I was never going to make it back there. So it sounds like your your moment, most memorable time you had in the service was definitely while you were in Korea. Um, having having been to Korea myself, I can I can say that I was a big fan of it as well. It's uh, it's just a fantastic place to to visit and be. They're very friendly with Americans. Uh, they absolutely love us to death. They're one of our greatest allies. Um, the war museum in downtown Seoul is fantastic. Um, probably one of the better museums I've ever been to. What would you say your favorite moment over there in Korea, the most memorable thing, you know, in terms of either what you did in the service or at operationally or just in general, what was your favorite moment from being over there? Well, I was, I was a very motivated, uh, motivated soldier i i mean my communications was i was very dedicated to it um so going out on like team spirit which was a big annual korean uh, military exercise and having my own crew um i because of the trouble i got into i was i was denied a lot of awards that were i was recommended for I was I had an article 15 while I was over there, which put me on a six month suspension of rank and everything else. Um, but I was constantly doing going above and beyond. Um, and I was recognized for it. And I, I loved it. I, I mean, I loved having a crew and being crew chief and and uh, and doing my job. And I was very good at it. Um, well, thank you for for sharing that piece of it. Yeah, I would. I, I I would have said going to Fairbanks probably would have been memorable for you, but no, uh, <laughs> I've, I've been to Fairbanks uh, and I would say knowing what it is now versus what it probably was in the 80s, I don't think I would have wanted to go in the 80s either. I, I, I just don't think that would have been a lot of fun for you. Had I known then what I know now, I probably would have taken it. Um, because it was a command sponsored position, which means I would have been sitting in, you know, class A, class B's every day, um, going to work in an office, doing communications from an office. I would have probably never seen the field. Um, and I would have been there. What was the average duty time over there? I think was two years. I think it was two years, just like Germany at the time. So let's let's take it a little further. Let's take it to to when you were getting out of the military, transitioning out. Talk a little bit about some of the other challenges uh, that you may have experienced along the way. Some of the biggest changes. Let's let's start let's start with the challenges of of getting out of the military, and then what do you do? It was kind of it was kind of a letdown. It really was. Um, whereas I had grown and I had matured and I had understood what responsibility and everything was. Um, and again, when I joined, I was 17, I got out, I was 20. Um, the majority of my friends were still doing the stupid nonsense stuff that they were doing when we were 17. And I was just like, what are you guys doing with your life? And um, it, it, was, it was very, very disturbing. My father was a plumber. I used to do plumbing jobs with him as a kid, do side jobs and stuff. So I had a pretty good knowledge about plumbing. I found work plumbing and I was, I, plumbing was always my go-to job. The, the transition out is, is difficult. And I would imagine back in the eighties, they didn't have transition assistance courses like they do now. 
it was probably just a swift kick in the tail and saying, all right, see you later. Uh, we know you'll be back. Um, yeah, you know, here, 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 here you go. You know, here's your here's your paperwork. Maybe here's your DD two fourteen. Your your paperwork out. Maybe, uh, and and go from there. I don't know. But I think that's part of what led to you to your your journey that it did, and which we'll get into. Let's talk about. Let's let's get a little personal here because we're going to talk about why why you wear the color teal and and what that and what that means and how it's evolved you in a person what what a life event happens to get you onto your current path of streaming uh being doing uh ovarian cancer awareness and okay. and and moving moving on from from that segment of your life. So I was doing little plumbing jobs here. I had done screen printing before in between plumbing gigs. I met I was doing computer graphics as well for screen printing. A new shop opened in town. I went to talk to them about doing some side work for them art wise. It was a tattoo artist. It was a tattoo artist playing with screen printing became quick friends. I got into an apprenticeship for tattooing. My family owns a tattoo shop. I am now a retired tattoo artist after 25 years of doing it. That's what I found as my career afterwards. Finally. So shop's been running now for 23 years here, 22 years in Minnesota. Um, I live in Wisconsin and my wife in June of 2017 um, was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. So, and it was stage three. It, it was a long dragged out process, finally getting it detected, uh, being put off by, you know, doctors because they couldn't find anything wrong with her because they were doing standard labs. Um, so it took literally seven months until we got to a doctor that we pretty much knew and they knew us and um, they were like, something's not right. Let's do a CT scan. And that's when they found the tumors. And it was like three days later, she was in like emergency surgery. They, it, they, the tumors were huge. They were 13 and a half centimeters. You could feel them through her abdomen. That's how prolonged or how long everything took for them to finally figure out what was going on. Um, so surgery, major, major surgery. Um, Two weeks later, starting chemo, my wife was basically in somewhat of isolation here at the house in the bedroom, no pets, no nothing. It was like basically like a clean room. Um, and I took off from the shop and for six months, I did nothing but take care of her, actually almost like seven months. Um, so a couple of months into doing that, I... I was responsible basically to wake her up every three hours to take meds. So I needed something to do while she was sleeping. And I was losing my mind. I, I was going crazy. I mean, it's such a tough thing to deal with and try to stay positive and everything else, which is important. Um, and I wanted to play games with my friends to, to kill some time at night and you know set a timer every three hours and go wake her up and give her her meds. And my friends, says, well, here's some games. Try some games. What do you think of this? What do you think of this? What do you think of this? And I got stuck on Dead by Daylight because it was something that was easy on controls. And at my age and everything going on, it was easy to learn. Um, and he says, well, you found the game that you like to play. You might as well start streaming. And I'm like, why? <laughs> Who is going to want to watch some old guy play games poorly? <laughs> and he said, you'd be, you'd be surprised. So that's what I was doing. And I had the time to do it. And I had eight to 12 hours every night to do it. And I, that's what I was doing. And that's, so that's what I do. And that's, I'm dedicated to that. And so I, and I know we're getting, we're getting close to end of time here. So I want to say, so if there was one thing that you could say that you could pass on to, uh, to the masses, the any anybody that would be watching this interview one piece of device that you could provide what would it be 
it's funny that you asked that because I was literally um, watching somebody streaming the other day and it's and it they sparked this conversation about empathy and uh, the, 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 my comment on it was you know not not all people have empathy it takes a conscious effort but if you make the conscious effort long enough it becomes a subconscious effort and you'll just do it and you'll just go that route so before you open your mouth think about who you're affecting um and if you can't be there for somebody find somebody that can um it's important and um, the world's changing and it needs to change faster and it needed to change a long time ago and when you're at the bottom it's you're you're going to come back up you just have to focus on it can't keep looking down keep start looking up make it back up there and a lot of people have lost that a lot of people never been taught that a lot of people don't know and that's when you need to talk to people when you're at your lowest is find people that are positive influences that can help you. There's a lot of people there out there that can't help you. And if they can't help you, go find someone else. Please go find someone else. There's people out there. Anyway, so if folks want to know more about Stream Dad, more about the 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 daddy of streamers, nah, that's not the right term. More about pops. <laughs> more about pops. If they want to, they want to get more of these nuggets of wisdom. Where do they need to go? Drop your Twitch channel, your Twitter. All if they want, if they want your social media, where do they need to go? Uh, search Stream Dad either on Twitter, Twitch, Discord. Um, if you can't find any of those, most of the time my chat bot is up. You can always go to my Twitch. Um, twitch.tv slash stream dad underscore don't forget the underscore twitch just link. the twitch just the just the just your twitch handle is the stream dad underscore yeah yeah <clears throat> everything else if you do if you do a search for at stream dad or i think it's like youtube slash cc slash stream dad whatever if you search stream dad you'll you'll find well thank you so much uh this has been a fantastic wonderful amazing and heartfelt edition of whiskey delta brought to you by military gaming league i am your host mike karnowski aka devil because we sure as heck got into some details this evening and our wonderful amazing guest stream dad thank you so much for everything that you shared this evening truly appreciated and we look forward to seeing everything else that you do for the community now and in the future thank, thank you so you much for, thank you for having me and thank you for doing this as well and if you're ever playing dead by daylight and you need a fourth message <laughs> <laughs>